You love podcasts. The stories, the laughs, the unexpected turns. But when this episode ends, the silence starts. Not anymore. Audiobooks.com turns that silence into your next great adventure. With over 450,000 titles, from bestsellers to hidden gems, your love for listening just found its new best friend. And because you already know the joy of audio, we're giving you three free audiobooks to start your journey. Imagine your favorite podcast, now with unlimited episodes. That's audiobooks.com. Keep the story going. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. Because for podcast lovers like you, the end of an episode is just the beginning. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E. Now Podcast One brings you Spike's Car Radio, a downloadable cars and coffee hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. All right, here we are, Spike's Car Radio. We've got a great show for you today, a very car-y show today, if you're tired of the comedy shows, which I'm not, by the way. I'm, I'm way into the comedy shows. <laughs> yeah, we have a car show for you. I'm also way into the car shows. Today my guest is uh, TV host, producer, automotive journalist, the Shrek of the automotive world. Is that a compliment? Matt Farrell, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, and I've also got my co-host, the real Zuckerman, back. Zuckerman, good to see you back in the studio, my friend. Good morning, Mr. Ferris. You've got to go to work, I know. I know, you make the money. just said right before, yeah, get me out of here, i got to go make the money. Well, you're here for a little while, because we're... Uh, you know, I wanted to have you on, Matt. Matt, you know, I don't think I've had you both here together. Before. I haven't. All I, hear you about, kinda... all I hear about your little show over here is how good Zuckerman is. <clears throat> Zuckerman's yeah. great, and now you're here. And but I'm now... like the filler for when Zuckerman has to work, usually. Yeah, it's so not filler. You, you, we all hang genuine. out. We talk cars. But I wanted to have you on because uh, Drive is in its uh, second season. Fourth on... season. Fourth season. <laughs> that's right. First you. Shrek I now. Should, we should have <laughs> prepped you a little bit better. Well, that's why you're here. I want to hear all about it. So it's you, you guys season. are launching your fourth Fourth season right now on NBC you're, Sports Thursday nights at nine and nine thirty. There you go. Two Eastern. shows in? Are you one show in? Two shows in? We're actually four shows in because they're doing it nine and nine thirty, and those are different shows. They're not right. double airing the same show. So, um, tell they, everybody about Drive in case they don't know what it is. It's like Top Gear, but with less money. <laughs> Basically, and, and who are the three hosts besides? Right, there's yourself? four. It's it's me, um, Chris Harris, who is on Top Gear. Right, Mike Spinelli. Uh, who is uh, a very talented writer. And did I see very... Alex Roy in there? Alex Roy is a has host. He, yeah. Has he been a host for all four seasons? No. He popped in occasionally in the first two, and he had more involvement with this third season. Right. Um, and Alex has has made himself... You know, he was like the cannonball guy. Right. Uh, and and he, he still is kind of the cannonball guy. I had, I had an experience with, like, the Cannonballers Club... You know, in New York for Alex's uh, uh, video like release party, I was just at. But um, uh, he's now kind of an expert in uh, electric cars and autonomous cars. Yeah, and no, so, I know, I see him write about that a lot. But yeah. but, but uh, now on Drive, what what is the premise of this Top Gear? What makes it different than Top Gear? Well, it's sort of it, it, it at its heart, it's a magazine style car show, mm -hmm. right? That's that's sort of what the goal is is to keep that magazine style car show that guys like us enjoy um to keep that alive um so it's definitely uh it, there, there are new cars and old cars and you know some segments are individual hosts some segments are group kind of things we did a 24-hour race of vir we uh we went to iceland like and wow. uh, spinelli and chris well, that's harris not cheap it is the way you do, we do it. <laughs> sure you what do you mean? What do if you, you took your family to Iceland, yes, it would cost more than the budget of this episode. <laughs> I'm not. I, you, I, you laugh, well, but I'm but doing explain, the math. Explain, explain the bit so that the you bit, were doing. Here's the bit. The, okay. Iceland is an hour long special. Our shows are um, they're mo f there's eight episodes this season. Six are half hour, two are an hour. So okay. uh, Iceland is an hour, and. Um, we, you know, Iceland is an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, we start in Reykjavik on the western side of the island, 
And the, 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 the question is, and I think, you know, you have to you hypothesize or whatever. The question is, what is the best way to get to the other side? And uh, so uh, Chris Harris and Mike Spinelli drove a Ford Raptor across the center <laughs> of the island, you know, next to the volcanoes. Right. You know, where the crazy <laughs> off-roader. Mm-hmm. And actually, you know, they were on a trail. They're on a, they were, there's a trail that goes through the middle. There's a lot of trails. But there's a, there is a main trail that is very popular for locals. And so they took that trail from one side of the island to the other. And then I took, there's a ring road that goes, you know, it's like the one that goes around the whole island. And they have built this ring road specifically to make Iceland a road trip friendly country. <laughs> uh, and so the road goes right by all the good tourist stuff. Uh-huh. And there's hotels what are the and tourist rest- things in Iceland? Oh, I mean, it's all, there's like nature, waterfalls, hikes. It's a very outdoorsy kind of place. The black mm-hmm. sand beaches, um, stuff like that. It's a very like, you know. Uh, I hear the people are striking there. You know, I, just beautiful I men and women too. walking. No, it's not true. No, no, no. you're thinking. <laughs> you're really thinking of maybe uh, it's just their Norway, m- Sweden. Like no, the it real was s- Iceland because I remember the Seinfeld cast or Jerry or somebody. NBC flew them. They said we'll fly you anywhere in the world. Uh, every season they'd get the private jet, go anywhere in the world. And one year they went to Iceland, and they came back and they felt so less than. Well, look because uh, of these uh, male and female goddesses. Uh, you didn't see it. I mean, look, I, I'm not saying I didn't see the occasional pretty girl there, but, I, but I've been to Sweden, you know? I don't know if yeah. you've been to Sweden, Zucker. Yeah, the Swedish girls. So the Swedish women, it's like, it's on some uh, completely other level. Okay, and well, let's get, to... let's get back to the car thing. So anyway. So the I premise drove... is he's bisecting the country, you're driving around the outside. He goes through, I go around. Right. We and is, there, is it a race? Is it a competition to see it's, who can finish first? Of course or... it is. It's not, it wasn't necessarily What's a the race. Bit? It wasn't a race. It's who, it, it was a who did, who did it better. What's who, the best way? Okay. What is the best way to do this as a car enthusiast and a driver? Okay. If you're going to go to Iceland, what's the best way to see it? Across right. the middle or around me? So when you're doing a show like this, so do you have a car in front of you with a camera in the back? Or you, actually, at that time, no. So you're just GoPro'd up? Or? I, we actually, I, had to, I brought one guy with me. I had a McLaren. Right. So we had me and <clears throat> one cameraman. You had a McLaren? Which a McLaren? one? 570 GT, okay. which is lovely. Mm-hmm. And we had all my clothes, all his clothes for five days, and then all the camera gear we need for five days in a McLaren. So you guys are <laughs> shooting your own show. We're shooting our, uh, we shot our own half of the show, and the entire rest of the film crew went with them to the off So what session. is NBC Sports contributing to this? I don't understand. If you guys well, just we don't have much money, but the money we do have <laughs> comes from them. <laughs> okay, right. I mean, I'm, but you're your own cameraman, and you're your. Are you editing? We the make show the together? entire NBC Sports show with nine people, right, including the cast, which is four. And are you going into <laughs> the edit room yourself and putting that together? Not me personally, but. Two of the people who do edit our show are also cameramen on the show. Is this JF Museal? Is yes, this, it is. Yes, yeah, that, yeah. Okay, I like yeah, it. It's Tangent Vector. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a hard, good, hardworking good group. guys. <clears throat> look, it's very. It doesn't look like a show that's as cheap as it is. Right. Honestly, I right. Mean, it, it's, so as you're watching, you do have to keep the in money, mind the these... money in the show makes it to the screen. Right. And, and we're talking when we're making an episode of Grand Tour or Top Gear, we're talking three to five mil an episode, right? What, I would cut those? that by. A hundred? What? What do you mean? <laughs> like, like it's one percent of that? Yeah, it's one percent. Right, of right. Budget. No, yeah. the, what, what I mean is though, these other guys, they're yes. putting a lot of money on the screen. Oh, they I think are. you guys do a great job for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's fun. I think it's you like get a will... lot more than one percent get... of that show. How does for 1%? Chris Harris get to host that show? Isn't he on Top Gear in England? Yeah, you know, here, actually, people ask that a lot. Uh, Drive airs internationally on the BBC. It does. Yeah, when I went to vacation in South Africa, there were fans there that had seen Drive, and I was like, "How have you? How do you see Drive?" What? And they're like, "It's on the BBC here." And <clears throat> wow. I, yeah, I didn't know that. So there, there actually is uh, some international so uh, synergy. You would think that would be a reason for them not to put Chris Harris on again, but they're they're just cool. It sounds like the British you know, are just cooler about that stuff, anyways. I don't know the specifics of his deal, but I do know uh, <laughs> that he does have to make Top Gear a priority, which can, right, which can right. make scheduling a challenge. Have they ever asked you to host one of these Top Gear shows? You seem like a natural for that stuff. I don't think they can afford me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Of course they could. 
Uh, they it, could. I don't think they want to. No, right. I don't want to. Do, no, I know you're talking top about gear. Top Gear USA. You and I. You you, and I that's that, a different. I don't mean Top Gear USA. I British mean, Top Gear. Yeah, like a British Top Gear, yeah, like the real like, ones. You know, that's like if if they asked you to take over for Jerry. You know, after season ten of Seinfeld, <laughs> why would you they know, do that? If all if it was still called Seinfeld in the same show, but then you were it. You oh, know, you don't. So you're not a fan. It's not that I'm not a fan. It's that I don't want to be in the shoes of the people that have to be in those shoes. But isn't Chris Harris doing a good job? I I, I think he is. Yeah, uh, who's the I'm other not guy? saying he's not. Uh, Matt, LeBlanc? Matt LeBlanc is doing he's a great fantastic. job. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that they're not the doing a good job. The goofy red-haired guy. I'm just gone. saying I don't want that kind of pressure. You don't want that pressure. I don't need what the pressure. What do you want? I want to make like the the Matt Farah show. You know this. <laughs> you, know, you know we want to make. We, you and I, would you watch the Matt Farah show? Of course no. I would. I'm in the room with him right well, now. Well, what is in the you Matt and Farah I spend show? our Saturdays go, sitting around drinking coffee at Bill's, I going know. what What can we make? That's what can new? we make? Well, you pitched me a very good idea. The, uh, the other I want to make that. show. Yeah, and, that, we, make and, that? and we have a little traction that? with that. We but do. That's, but that's, that's a fun little show. Yeah, I think we're going to sell that show. But that's that, that's a kind of a one off. I also I like. But the Matt Farah show. What what. What would the, the Matt, Matt Farah show, show be? It would be the 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 very the version of the Bourdain for Cars show oh, right, right. that people keep talking about making, but no one has ever been able to really nail it. Well, I I shot a version of that with Magnus. With Magnus, Walker, I know, yeah, uh, in history, yeah. yeah. It's tough to pull off. I know it is. You could do it. And if anyone can do that format, it is 100% you have to be, me. You have to be a guy who can ask questions. You have to be a journalist, really, and you have to know how to kind of write you know that what? to make I, it interesting. I I can be that exact person. I have no problem. You know, you, we sit down at the table and I ask the those types of questions. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. Where I where my weak point is is getting that that meal set up in the first place. You right. know what I mean? If I had a great producer that would well, help yeah, me, where we had an idea and a, and a producer that would make that conversation happen. Period. I could nail the conversation once I was there. <laughs> What's nice, funny about this, Matt that has not worked on a big show before. He doesn't understand that you would have but that is a thing. I would, you would sit down with a yeah. table full of yeah, people yeah. and four producers, and they homie, would pitch you different segments. Let me explain something, and then you, talk, homie. and then you would. We don't have a sound your... guy. I know. <laughs> on drive on drive. Our cameramen are also the audio people. That's. That's the thing. So, well, here, so I don't know what let's I go, would but do Let's if go back a little more in time. Where does Drive begin? How did you guys put this little consortium together? It began with the, with the YouTube channel Drive, right. which was like a YouTube premium. But how did premium. you meet each other? How did you know each other? Oh, I met JF uh, and Mike Spinelli. I worked together in my first ever video job mm-hmm. at Next New Networks. In uh, The show was called Garage 419. And I was brought in by a guy named Emil Rensing who will be sentenced uh, Friday, November 17th in federal court in, in New York. And I tell everybody we should, we should go and watch the sentencing. Sentenced for? Fraud. Um, yeah. Amol nitrate. Amol, yeah. I mean, a guy named Amol. Who would have thought he would? Who would have yeah. thought a guy named so Amol was a piece of shit? <laughs> what? <You know? laughs> and so he ripped you off. He ripped off some, some people. Yeah. Which he's now. But you I, guys. We don't have to say allegedly anymore because he pled guilty. So he did, did you, rip off so some you, people. Were there hot tears? They were. So always, there's always tears. He's gonna after get that. You. He's gonna get the for the federal prison tear, yeah, the tattoo tear mm-hmm. on there. But but you you met Harris and you met Spinelli so, there. No, you I, guys... I met JF and Mike Spinelli at, at this original company, mm-hmm. and then we I had brought in Tom Morningstar who works on the show as well, and then they had gone and gotten Chris from the UK uh, for YouTube work, and then NBC approached us initially about licensing our YouTube content. Season mm-hmm. one of our show <clears throat> was basically our YouTube content right. with professional studio-grade intros and outros. Wow. And then season two was original content, season three was original content, and now the the, the, the stories get bigger. Right, right. And in, in the meantime, didn't they sell it to Time Life? Didn't they you guys... sold the YouTube <clears throat> channel to Time Inc., to time but, the, but they did not sell the television show. Oh, they didn't. So okay. they sold the YouTube channel, which became The Drive. Okay. And I wrote for them for a minute. <clears throat> and then they kept the television show. And so JF and them at Tangent Vector, his company, they they make the TV show. Got it. Yeah. So it's what, actually, it's really complicated. <laughs> it, it sounds like it. That's and, Hollywood, and, though, right? You know, I've noticed because now that's Hollywood. Car Matchmaker is on NBC Sports. Yeah. Does your show ever air at the time it's supposed to air? <sighs> it seems to get delayed I get, by get, like we've Red Bull for sports stuff before. 
the hockey game goes into overtime and whatever. Yeah, well, I'll call, I'll, I'll kind of check in with it to see what yeah. it looks like, and then but I see Red Bull Racing once yeah. in a soccer game, and then Brian Vickers behind the desk <laughs> talking about NASCAR and things about NASCAR I don't quite care about. You know, it, and I, everyone's I, like, "Well, where's your show?" And I'm like, I, "I don't know what's going on over there. I don't know how this thing works." You know, it, I am I don't have cable. <laughs> Right, at my right. house. So yeah, most people it, don't. For me, ignorance is bliss when it comes <clears throat> right, to the right. actual airing of the show. I'm sure. Do you look at the shows after they're put together? Do I watch. A, I watch the finished cut. I don't watch them on broadcast TV because I don't have broadcast right. TV. But I, they do. They share the finished cuts with us. And I. So you I don't get them. too concerned with how you look and how you sound or things you say. Or... I know I do. I, <clears throat> I watch a rough cut. They, well, they they will send out rough cuts and, mm-hmm. and they will ask for notes and I would say like I don't you know I don't have like edits in my contract or anything but right, you know right. we all want the show to be good <clears throat> right and so there was there's one inst- I've definitely had them because ultimately if I do a car review or if I'm talking about the car in my smoke and tire videos in my one takes it all stays in so there's you know the audience will hear what they want to hear but they will hear everything in the tele- television show as I'm sure you know. The person really giving the car review is your editor, <laughs> right? Right. And so if you don't, if you don't have the, and the editor may or may not be a car person. <clears throat> they may or may not know what you're really trying to convey. They may not know that this point is more important than that mm-hmm. point. And so if you have to, so anyway, I watch those cuts in order to make sure that um, that the overall impression of the review that the audience sees is what I'm trying to say about the car. You know, I just thought of a good show. You and I were talking about one Zuckerman. Have you heard this? Uh... This would be Spike and Matt's stupid car flips. Oh yeah, this would be a fun <laughs> show. Yeah, and this just... is based on Matt's video that he made about his new daily driver. It was a 1990 so, Mercedes. Oh, one Mercedes SL500. Oh, one Mercedes SL500. I just I I, I I I don't know where you had it. If it was on Instagram or somewhere. No, it's just on I my just, YouTube channel. It's on my feed somewhere. And I see, oh, hey, there's Matt Farah, and oh, hey, he's in this Mercedes. And I start watching it, and it's just him driving through where? Culver? Just driving in traffic. Driving in traffic, talking about this car, this dumb car that I've never wanted. And by the end of the video, I want one of these cars. <laughs> I have sold one to him. He's well, and going, what he... I respect <clears throat> about Matt is, is that he does mine a segment of cars that we would normally overlook. And, it's, and when yeah, you get yeah. those cars... You one, you satisfy the the hunt and perch acquisition mm-hmm. urge, and two, you get to enjoy something fun. And if you're not in it deep, you're out of it. Yeah, well, yeah. it's just this is just a mild investment. Yes, this is the, this is just advertising. Advertising works. Yeah, you know we we, we can, talk about I, this all I, the I time. Can move we can, my own market. Well, we drive <laughs> cars all the time, but then you you know Zuckerman, you and I will film each other and send each other the video right. and go, why does that look like more fun than I had when I was actually? That's driving like me the car. watching you wearing that Yachtmaster <laughs> one of <laughs> Crown and Caliber. I'm going, yeah. God, you know, until this very I moment, know. I've been like, I'm not that into the Yachtmaster <laughs> one. Neither. Now I'm like, damn, that is fire. <laughs> That's a fine one. I got to I got to tell Zuckerman though, because we, I so you know, I'm in the club now. You are. I'm in the club. I now am. I can have breakfast with oh, you. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the news, club. ladies and gentlemen. And not only are you in the club, you went in the club in a well, big Well, hold on, hold on, seat. hold on. Hold on, Will. Drum roll. Put in a drum roll right there. Go ahead, Matt Farah. Will's like panicking. He's like, drum roll? He we puts can't it, do he, a drum no, roll. No, people are hearing it right now. It's still going on. He's putting it in in post. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt Farah. Announce I've, what, I what bought, you bought. I bought an 87, uh, two owner, California its whole life. Uh, G50 Carrera sunroof coupe with a whale tail. <laughs> he bought ca- a Porsche, ladies and gentlemen. Red over red. That it's a heinous is, color. No, the it is not awful. a heinous color. Give it me is, sixty grand for it. Right. I am going to tell you that. <laughs> I am going to tell you that that is the way to go into Porsche. And what you're going to realize is that with that heinous color, a color that is never seen uh, in all of the blacks, grays, and whites that you're going to encounter all day long. People are going to look at that car and they're I'm going painting to go, it. Oh my God. I'm painting it. Don't paint it. I hate it. it. Drive I'll it, tell you what, drive even it for a month. It's a, it's a well, purple. I'm going to drive for a month. It's a, he, I call him the Porsche pimp. It's when he saw, I saw it on your Insta- Instagram feed. He has a plan for it. He wants to turn it into a safari car or something. He wants I'm to do it with a safari build. Build. He's Why? a build guy. Because He's not I, like because, us. Because but look, let's just, let's just. Welcome him into the Porsche yes, group you're here. Right? Why do I have to start be... telling him what Listen, to do? Listen, right, but he had a really done. good he had a really good point about this purple color. Okay? When, so say, here... say what you said to me because so, I yeah. I loved this observation. I think it's right on when it comes to purple Porsches. 
So people eater. Two things. One <laughs> is I got this car cheap, and I got it cheap because it sat there on Pelican parts. Well, that's not the purple the, thing. The I purple just said thing the is that everyone thinks that I now I got this car cheap because no one wanted it. All of a sudden, now that I have it, everyone thinks it is on me. To be the savior of ugly purple Porsches. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, I have now a responsibility to save this no ugly car. No one else car. bought this car. No one else bought it's this car. It's been sitting there thing. for a long And what his observation was, which I loved, which is every, all the Porsche guys love purple cars, but they don't buy Nobody purple cars. Nobody buys them. No one wants them. And I them. bought it, and I can do whatever and I want with it. someone says to me, oh, you need to preserve the value. Of oh, there's value in the car. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Give me 20 more than I paid right <laughs> now. Hilarious. You buy a purple Porsche yeah. and keep no, it. Well, don't make me buy Farron, it. Farron now owns that segment of the right. color so, deal. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. Well, by the way, cause I said this to Graham Rahal because he wanted to get, what is it? Is it the aubergine, Zuckerman? Is it the aubergine yes. color of the 73? Yes. And I said, Really, he goes. What do you think of this? Like, oh, I I love looking at it, but I'm not going to ever buy it. You know, but yeah. but because I I'm I'm that same way. I love looking at ultraviolet, the GT3 RS ultraviolet color. <sighs> Beautiful. I love, on but I'm not going to buy it. Somebody else's car. Yeah, on somebody else's car. Because yeah. I don't want to just... hear everybody make grape ape jokes and everything else. Uh, you know and... what though? I'm glad he's in. I think he's going to catch the bug in a big way. He's already I had already it. Have. He's no, already I, I already it. have. I just so what's your have... plan for it? So I'm working with Lee Keen, racing driver. Lee Who Keen. is that? Lee Keen is a GT racing driver. Okay. He, he won the Rolex GT championship when it was called that. It's now called IMSA Tudor. Yacht He's Master. won the 12 hours of Sebring mm-hmm. in a Porsche. He's won, he's won a few big races in a Porsche. He's podiumed at Daytona a few times. Wow. Uh, he's okay. a legit driver. His gig now is building these Safari Porsches. Wow. Now, you guys That's have seen That's a real the, gig? Yeah, he's, got a, a job, he's got a list. Like Mailman? He's got a list. Just take the deposits and run. <laughs> yeah. Easier than doing the work. <laughs> right. So says Amon well, Nice. So right? How long <laughs> is his list? His list? How long is his list? He just finished number six. I'm number 14. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. So unlike the, uh, the Luft auto cars, which right. you've seen, the white and the yellow right. that Joey Seeley mm-hmm. and Pat Long and those guys are building. Those cars are basically... Wait, they're building Safari 911s too? Yeah, did you see them I at thought they just built... the white one that Eli bought? I thought that was just one. They've, they're now on number two. They are building the second one. How so... many was Safari car 911s does the world need? I don't know. We're talking about like 16 cars. <laughs> I don't think like it's saturated. Porsche, Porsche was <laughs> it was raised. saturated after one. Look, look Porsche right? was raced. Have been rallied. Has, Porsches have been rallied throughout the their Paris entire car existence. 959. Yeah, entire I, I get it. You yeah. are correct about that. But what does it turn out to be? Here's, but here but is what. what you, who's driving that? Here is what I think that living in Los Angeles is a lot like off roading. Yeah. And I think the, the roads I have, are bad. I have driven Lee's personal safari car. Yeah, I, I did a video on it for for uh, for the show. This vehicle was one of the it was one of the finest motoring experiences I've ever had. Period. Really, I've driven a lot. Did of, you drive it on dirt road where it was yes, meant to be? I driven? drove it on tarmac and I drove it on dirt road. Right on tarmac, it rode well. You really, I mean, yes, you lose handling limit because you have off road tires, but. On a highway cruise and in in some mild sweeping bends, it still feels like a 911 is supposed to be. Yeah, no, it, it sounds cool. It does. If you when live in Utah and you have a dirt road or out in the country, yeah. I totally get it. I'm Dude, just saying. Are you aware of the amount of desert we have in this state? Really? You can Here? drive. You can drive 30 miles outside of town and have wait. Is it the avocado of fruit or vegetables? <laughs> Which is it? You can. Have... We went through this earlier, but I know we, we don't have... live here for so the what desert. What is the trails? legume? <laughs> I know. I, 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 I hear what you're and saying. Also, so you'll I, go up to Go- Gorman yeah, or somewhere yeah, like yeah, that and have fun. And, and, and I want to drive. I'm going to drive it to Mammoth skiing, That's fun. Big Bear stuff okay. like that. I mean, look, I already have my Mustang, which is the is my Canyon, you know, yes. car. I don't need to have a Porsche that serves where I have to go. On this day, do I choose one of these two cars? You're, you're scratching your head, Zuckerman. <clears throat> and he d- he cannot possibly understand. No, I can't understand. He's going to do the Porsche thing his way. I, he is going to do it saying. his way. But like anything else, I think that the Porsche experience makes you eventually do it their way. That's a, that's what that's happened funny. to me. Because yeah, that's funny. I, that's funny. That's I, a very funny observation. I started <laughs> trying to do it's Porsche like a homeowners way. association, right. you know. Or like, yes. It's like one of those horrible country yes. clubs. By you, your 70th they, birthday, you're the one telling people to tuck right. their shirts in, too. Right. Mm-hmm. You, you get co-opted. You don't co-opt <laughs> them. And, and, that's, and remember, I started with the Green Goblin, yeah. and I had yeah. some other, like, r groupy cars and other stuff. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, eventually, you say, you know, maybe these, 
you know, this this factory of German engineers really knew what they were doing, <laughs> and I should respect the original. That's, that could happen. That's uh, you have a point. I mean, you have a point. I think. Hey, by it, the way, Porsche, if you're listening, what about a new Safari? I mean, that would, yeah. I think, yeah. honestly, honestly, a brand new Safari 911. I think that would, would really be pretty kill. sweet. Yeah, even right? if they just do it as a fun thing for the concept lawn at Pebble or something. Yeah. You know, the problem is they don't have a sense of humor. <clears throat> but no, they the, um, they would do that. Like you said, there's look, a rich history of these cars. I, I understand that a lot of people see the Safari thing as a trend, and it's as it's what's hot right now. When I'm jumping up, the fact of the matter is, not a lot of people <laughs> have driven. As many of you, <laughs> you see are Will laughing at the idea that Safari you guys, cars are hot right now. They are. <laughs> this is has been 14 May, right? <laughs> no, the new Taylor Swift six. is hot right now. Whatever. Safari cars is pretty low on that list. I, well, in the, the world that we in exist our, in, yeah, in our little porch, Safari yeah. cars are pretty hot. I mean, I have. I am one of the few people out there who has seen these things and have actually had real seat time. In yes, them, that's that, true. That, that don't own them. I found the experience of driving it. To be wonderful, and I and think, you're gonna and build I would one like now. to have that experience. And so, what are they going to do to your little purple so, uh, pimpy mobile? We are the engine may, stays mostly stock. You okay. don't need a lot of power for this stuff. Mm-hmm. So we do nine six four cams. We do the chip. We do headers and exhaust. That's oh, it, super. and service it. Okay, and we are putting air conditioning in it because I want to drive the thing a lot. Mm-hmm. The suspension remains a torsion beam rear suspension. It's just longer travel. It's a four inch lift. Okay, and then you have the Fuchs wheels refinished with the RSR finish, the silver RSR finish, mm-hmm. or the grayish finish. BFG all-terrain tires, 16-inch, mud flaps. Ducktail wing. I'm going to sell the whale tail. If you want a whale tail, i got to hook you up. <laughs> Who Duck, wants a purple uh, whale yeah. tail? Ducktail, uh, ducktail I wing. I my bedroom wall. Fog light pod in the front. Um, you, you, you tighten in the bumpers a little bit. You get rid of some of that accordion shit, you know. Um, a uh, little bash bar in the front, kind of mm-hmm. low profile with a skid plate, uh, roof rack, and then you you'd go wild in the interior. Fun fabrics, Pashas or something cool. Zebras. It's not. Over, I mean, it's really not over the top. No, it sounds actually it sounds, it sounds cool. great. And, and honestly, and I what is the, the what is the final color going to be? The final color is paint going to be paint code three two nine, which has had a few different names over the years. It's been called Oxford blue, Dalmatian blue. Nice. You, you see, yeah, right. Dalmatian nice. blue is All right. a you hot got me color. Now. It's a yeah. beautiful color, I mean, beautiful blue. <clears throat> right, and here, my other argument against the cassis red. Even if you like it as a color, it is not a good color for a rally car. <laughs> it's a bad rally car color. <laughs> Dalmatian so, blue is great. Dalmatian blue, if you, if those of you out there look it up, it is a hot color. It's yeah. got a, this electricity to it. Yeah. Especially like you know when they painted it back in the day, some of the older car. If you see a car that's freshly restored with Dalmatian blue, woo, it pops. It's oh, it pops. Okay, he sold me. All right, but I'm, 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 I'm make easy. us three. Well, I'll tell you what. When I get the cars up, I mean. Drive it for ten minutes, and you tell me it's fun. It is. I drove Eli's little... car. Oh, you did. I did drive Eli's car, and it's I love the lean. I love the travel. Yeah, yeah. It, it really was fun, despite all my shit talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. All right, it's we'll fun. be right back with more Matt Farah after this. When you're looking to buy a car, you want to make sure that you're getting real pricing on actual inventory. Unfortunately, a lot of times this isn't the case. People configure cars online only later to find out they're not available. This just happened to my brother. Well. With True Car, you get real pricing on actual inventory. This is not pricing offered by True Car, but pricing from an actual dealer. And not just any dealer, but a True Car certified dealer. This is a carefully curated network of dealers committed to transparency and offering you a competitive market price. Using True Car, you can easily find the car you want. Next, True Car will show you what other people in your area paid for the same car you're looking for. Now you know what a fair price is, so you can feel confident. And don't we all want to feel confident? Over 3 million cars have been sold to True Car users by the True Car Certified Dealer Network. There are over 13,000 True Car Certified Dealers nationwide. You will work directly with a True Car Certified Dealer contact. True Car users are more likely to enjoy a fast buying process when they connect with True Car Certified Dealers. True Car users save an average of over $3,000 off MSRP. When you're ready to buy, visit True Car to enjoy a more confident car buying experience. Some features not available in all states. And guess what? I'm not telling you what features and what states. Hey, it's Jay Moore, and it is time, finally, for America's Lakers podcast. That's right. I'm going to be hosting America's Lakers podcast. My man, Aaron Larsoul, an analytical genius, he's going to bring to the table what I can't every Wednesday. America's Lakers podcast exclusively 
at podcastone.com, the podcastone.com app, which I highly recommend. You can rate and review this podcast on all Apple products. And guess what we're not going to do? We're not going to bathe in the gossip and the gratuitous negativity that's been swallowing Los Angeles whole lately. Who did what? Who snitched? Who said what? How about truth? How about facts? How about statistics? How about rotations? What's Luke Walton thinking? Who's underperforming? Who's overachieving? Who's rewarded? Who's coming? Who's going? And what are we going to do with all that delightful, delicious cap space? America's Lakers podcast with me, Jay Moore, and my man, my brother, Aaron Larsoul. Every Wednesday, podcast1.com. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Spike's Car Radio here with the star of Drive on NBC Sports, oh, Matt yeah. Farah, and, of course, one of the most vile human beings and car collectors <laughs> in the world, the real Zuckerman. <laughs> <laughs> that is so you funny. piece of shit. That is so funny. The homo habilis of the automotive The most, the most vile human being in car collecting. <laughs> that is so we, funny. <laughs> he's a good man. And he's a bad man at the same time. That's what we love about Zuckerman. Every pancake has two sides. Every pancake. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? All right. Well, folks, uh, we're going to answer some questions in a minute. You sent me a lot, but I wanted to talk about this um, this new Porsche, this Carrera T that caught us off guard. Mm, Grab that money. You grab that money. This is the new one. Uh, (laughs) The T, of course, stands for Turing. The new model is going to be the lightest 911. In the 911 range, weighing <coughs> only <By> 30 pounds, <coughs> 3,142 3, pounds. The T takes its inspiration from the career of the same name produced back in 1968, which they used to race these cars, Zuckerman. You know, and I just bought a T. You and I just bought a T. They used to race the a lot of cars, tea. Spike. Well, they would always pull the T's off the line and race those because of that like this. they have cup cars. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> do that here, let me read some stats because everybody wants to know what, what to make of this. I, uh, by the way, I'm liking everything I hear so far. This is a flagrant cash grab. This is marketing. Yes. All right. <laughs> Buy it's, a Carrera. Save well, yourself. Here, here's a little more of what it is. Zuckerman, you wanted to know. It's based on the Carrera Coupe. Uh, 370 horsepower, 339 foot-pounds of torque, 3-liter twin-turbo boxer 6. Good for 0-60 to 60 time, 4.3 seconds. Not bad. Uh, optional PDK, but you'd get the manual, right? Um, top speed, 180. Let's see. Uh, All the things you just listed, can I just state for the record, are exactly the same as the base Carrera. The, None of the things you it just... It doesn't have a T on it. Well, yeah, it, has, it has fabric door pulls. Oh, it's got the fabric and door pulls. And it's got pulls. fabric right. seats. And it's got fabric seats. And here's the deal. Lightweight, the... Weight, lightweight glass. Fa- by the, don't you love fabric door pulls? I mean, that is a Porsche... Not when it costs extra money, and With not that. if it doesn't have a four-liter motor behind it. And that's my point, which is in the olden days when they decontented a car, you ha- you paid less money yeah, for it. Yeah. This is a gimmick, as yeah. you said. Which began with what? The RS America? Is right. That the first is it 93? The, the, yeah. The, the, so the, the, give the sticker something on it to make is, them feel uh, good. Many the moves. sticker is $103,000. So uh, is that no. more expensive? How much yes. more expensive than a base I Carrera I drove is that? a base Carrera press car that right. was, let me tell you, glorious. $96,000, manual mm. transmission, sports seats, sport exhaust, nothing else. And it was glorious. Right. To pay $110,000 more for... Well, it's not 110 I'm more. Sorry, I'm sorry. To pay $10,000 more. 10000 more. For, for what Carrera appears team. to be basically <clears throat> nothing. You For a badge. For a badge. Why wouldn't you just got spend $10,000 more on an S? Why wouldn't you get a Carrera S and get I'm, more I'm not, power? I'm not disagreeing with you. but I said I, this. For me to get into a car in the morning, I'm just like putting my – if I were to go, all right, in my head, let me set aside the ceramics on this car and get the Carrera T instead. And I open that door in the morning in, of my Miami blue Carrera T, and I see those door pulls. <laughs> <laughs> that, that to me, I'm, and the perceived lightness, even though I'm probably not going to feel it, it's 40 no. pounds. He's not a real Porsche guy, but you, you guys listening to a Porsche, you understand that I feel like now I just got a pretty nice little deal for this 911. I'd it's like, not GT3 pricing; it's something cheaper, and I'm going to have a, a nice little nine light 911. Go Porsche, ahead, Porsche is going to be 
a mass producer of specialty cars. This is what I said. <laughs> yeah, that could be. what I said very, very recently because they realized everybody now wants to be the special guy. That's, so they're yeah, going to well, give true. everybody something Everyone's special. Everyone has their own little version of special right. something. And, and so this touring is a little bit special. And I'm going to give the guy respect. I'm not going to. I'm not going to look down on him for having Well, look, look where else they pop that touring label on the GT3 too. Right. So, so now this I guy who can't so afford it. Funny. Everyone you, who it, bought a 911R, I oh, just. Love, love that, that all of them. Yes. It was a master stroke on Porsche's they behalf. Them. Yeah. <laughs> they f- let's just be no, they frank. No, 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 yeah. wait. No, they didn't fuck the guys who bought them. They, yes. they, the they brokers. Fucked, yes. The guys the who broker, traded the on them. Right. The and the then black they gave, market. Yeah. And they gave the purists a car like it. I mean, it was a total win. It's a masterful move. And it's so really it's always brilliant. that. And the tightrope they have to walk is not to make it too accessible. And that's why right. they have to keep slicing the pie ever so smaller. And are we going to reach a point? I think. Currently, there's 29 versions of the 911. <laughs> Are we going to ever get Are we slicing 50? the cheese too thin? No. I, you know, I once, back when Paul Walker was alive, live, and they had just shot Fast and the Furious 4, which we thought was hilarious that they had made four, four of these, of these stupid right, movies. Right, he yeah. was well aware of how stupid they were when he was. You should see the size we, of we the had producer's a, house had in my bet, neighborhood. And he bet me that it would make it to 10. And I was like, no, not never. And he goes, <laughs> if we make it to 10, I'll give you 100 bucks. I was like, all right. They're about, they're about to make nine. I yeah. mean, so it's like, yeah, will they gonna. ever? Will there ever be? You know, someone was. Will there ever be a five hundred horsepower nationally aspirated nine eleven? Will there ever be fifty variants? And they'll make. They, they're going to make a safari, a safari cab, a safari targa, a, a safari, safari touring. <laughs> they should. So uh, Jerry had the best idea: the test mule package on right. a nine eleven. I Where you love just have that. The, the yeah. Body cladding. <laughs> yeah, body cladding or dazzle or whatever you want. You can have the different versions, but a safari version. Is another great idea. Well, Mercedes is doing it right. The you know the, they first they sold the six by six, and they said that we're going to make a hundred of That's these. The and lo and behold, they made six hundred. Yeah. Then the the Jeep four by four square, yep. the shorter one, mm-hmm. which looks hilarious if mm-hmm. you see them running around Beverly Hills. Yep. And they made five times the number of that, and now they're making this E class wagon that's lifted. Have you seen this thing? No, I haven't seen that. They took the portal axles that give you that crazy lift in an E class, and they put it in an E class, and so now they have an E class lifted on. It's sick. Some, <laughs> sick. Somewhere, somewhere in a third-rate nursing home, the guy that penned the AMC Eagle <laughs> yes! is, is, telling, <laughs> is telling his nurse, I invented this. I invented this. They're like, yeah, shut up, old man. And then Paul, Paul Hogan down in Australia is like, the world's second sport utility wagon, you know? Yeah. What is the use of the jacked-up G-Wagon, though? I mean, I, I, I saw one the in Beverly Hills. G-Wagon? Yeah. I mean, it's they're spectacular for off-roading. But... Yeah, but here I'm only seeing them in Beverly here. Hills. Of course, and they're stupid here. You know. Can I remind you, sir? Yes. That you drive a Porsche GT3 at yeah. nowhere near the fucking pace that that car is capable of going. Hallelujah! You oh, drive, right. I drive that car you drive fast. That car. I'm gonna put Lee Keen in that car with you. <laughs> Wait, the GT3? Show, he'll show you what fast is. Oh, no, no. You I, drive a GT3 to breakfast. Don't tell me I about do. what a car is not. But I drive them do. on the track, too. I, I know what that car, I know what that GT3 RS can do on the track. Well, I had that it guy, road Atlanta. That guy parked in front of Hermes probably goes off roading every weekend. No, he was. The, <laughs> take a guess. Take a guess. Because it's so stereotypical LA. Take a guess who was in the car. I'm what not what the job? It, what, when you saw that car? Yeah, they, I, whose car it was. What 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 they did? Who's actually buying? Yeah, that? who was buying the car? Who bought it? Who I, bought it? I would say it's not going to be a rapper. It was a rapper. Was it a rapper? <clears throat> yes, oh. it was a musician. Oh, that's okay. the musician choice. It's not just rappers, by the way. It's musicians. It's that's what they're doing. They're driving around in this jacked up. Aren't those going to tip over? Aren't these guys so going to tip over no, you know sunset why, you know and roll why, on these You know things? why they don't? Mercedes has this hilarious fail-safe system where if the wheel is turned – I took a G-Wagon to a track day once. I yeah. mean, yes, this is dumb. But I took a G63 to a track day at Willow Springs, and I learned – that if the wheel is turned more than about 45 degrees mm-hmm. in either direction, a G-Wagon will give you about 10% of really? the available <laughs> engine's horsepower. Wow. And then it will you can you could stand on the floorboard with that gas pedal and you'll get nothing until that wheel is straightened out again. And then and then like a switch. It's like, you know, you're you got the wheel turned, you you brake, you turn in Right, you go to get back onto the power, and you got nothing. And then, as you straighten the wheel, 
uh, switch, full 500 horsepower. Wow. Boom. And then, Those and clever Germans. The that, Germans, the crowds. That's, that's why people don't <laughs> roll G-Wagons. Fantastic. All right, let's Wait, take who some. Was driving the, the, who was driving it? I, I don't know which guy. I was told by the paparazzi guy up front. Oh. I, I didn't bother to ask. But it was a beautiful, uh, like, metallic brown color that I hadn't seen uh, before. And I am intrigued by it. But there's also this, like, uh, soft green color, mm-hmm. this non-metallic green that Mercedes yeah, is that. making right now that's beautiful. Like, it's almost like an army green, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. almost like this leaf green 911T mm-hmm. that I just bought. That's All what right. I didn't say. Congratulations. That's a nice car. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're. It, I'm in the process of sorting it. Is it's. It, uh, it I put fucked? new tires on it. That that made a huge <laughs> difference. Modern tires on old 911s make all the difference in the it's world. Got four, it's got 14. It's got 14 inch wheels on it, and I could see you very instantly meet a roadblock with 14 inch <laughs> yeah. wheel fuchs. There's nothing except Michelin defenders, and that's what it was on there. But it was like it was. Imagine just trying to run in rain boots. Yeah, yeah. That's what it felt like. Did you buy new Michelin? I defenders? went to no. I went to Pirelli, and they make the vintage tire now. The oh, okay. CN36. Centurados or whatever they're called. It's a new rubber compound and a vintage look. No, it was just the Ex- yes. vintage cool. look. Exactly. And it was a ni- it was like putting Nikes on really? for the first time oh, and great. running. The car is just light as a feather. It's got a second gear synchro issue and a couple little paint issues, but it the is color. such a winnow. And, and the color. The color is nice. Yeah, you can't drive color, but people are enjoying the color. But the feel, like the the relaxation this car is delivering. Like when you're stressed out, Zuckerman. When you drive this car, I took it through the canyons. You just, you, it's, it's like you just had a Valium and a massage. It is the color. It's unreal. It is the color of the mental ward. It wasn't the color. <laughs> it, it, it really was, is. It's the soothing green color. Yeah. But it's not yeah. the color you can't see. It's the T, mm. the lightness. Uh, I I've never owned what a seventy T before. Uh, what does a seventy T come with for, compared to a, a regular nine eleven? Is it lighter? Well, I can tell you the difference between the 70S and the 70T is the front end. The 70S is really more of a race car, and the front end feels totally different. In this car, I, it, the T is so light. Mm. Zuckerman, I don't I, think you've ever I felt anything like this. I don't think you have a torsion bar on the front of the T, and on the S you probably did have a torsion bar. Uh, there was a, it was on solid footing on the front wind, the bigger wheels too, and it's just, right. but it's still that light, course, springy 2.2-liter engine. engine is, is totally That's different. That's there. It's really, just, even the, that it, revability, and it's but you've got the, these little things like the seat in my seventy three T. That seat that we felt when we first sat down in the leaf green, it's the same feel. And you go, <laughs> Matt, something's some wrong here. Some guy who leaned but to it's the not. left on his oh, fat yeah, ass yeah. wore that oh, seat. But it's not. Yeah. It's just he likes it. Is, I probably is going to send me to the chiropractor. No, I I have a very sensitive spine, and so if I get into a car like that, I I a half an hour, and I'm in extreme. I've never heard pain. anyone say that I have a sensitive spine. All right, so let's, let's, let's get to Jewish. some questions. Let's get to some questions here. Michael Morgan, discussion on vintage Rolex. The only thing going on in vintage Rolex Oof, happened yesterday. Paul Newman. The Paul Newman Rolex went up and crashed. Crossed Oof. the block. You I officially you, said fifteen million dollars <laughs> to my friends. I was pretty close because yeah. it went for fifteen yeah. five. Yeah. All said and done, seventeen point seven five two million dollars. Uh, what did you guys think of that? Is that There's watch too many worth rich that? People. Well, <laughs> it's just too many rich people. These Phillips guys. The person who bought that has so much money they don't even. I care. know who bought it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know who bought it. Rolex bought it. That makes That's sense. That's the word on the street is Rolex really? bought it. Our, we, we heard from a guy who's uh, in touch with the Silicon Valley types who knew two people willing to go to 11. And I think they were bidding against Rolex, which you're never going to – you're we, not winning we, if you're bidding I read against Rolex. The, I, so. I mean, who knows if it's true. But I read that – because didn't the bidding go from 1 to 10? No, no. Yes. That's what I yes. – I downloaded the app, right? Yeah. So I could watch this. It was so exciting. And he said, let's open the bidding at 1 million. And someone yelled – Ten million, so, and it stopped the room. And the guy thought it was a mistake. And for forty-five seconds, it was the hamburger cheeseburger mumbling of the crowd. Like, oh, <laughs> what's happening? Was that real? I don't know. I don't know. Ten million, and that's where it started. It was. It was really was exciting. I saw that happen at Pebble once, where yeah. they opened the bidding at at you know five hundred k or whatever, and the first bid was seven million dollars. You go, a, what the. F- Fuck. No, no, it's a legitimate intimidation yeah. that we that I learned from David Gooding and Charlie the auctioneer that if you want something and you know you, the number you're willing to go yeah, to, you try weed, to shed everybody down. Yeah, you'll weed out. A the bunch problem of is you're not shedding down Rolex. Yeah, because <laughs> well, what, right. what you do there is you you do, you prevent a momentum. from Yeah, being built and it up. happened. Yeah, yeah, and I saw right. it. It was so, lovely. But what I read far. was that Rolex threw down that ten right away because they wanted to guarantee it went for over ten. 
That you that think was, so? I don't know. I, Did you read that? I read that. I don't know if I believe it. I, I believe that doesn't they sound it. like something that they would do. That sounds like a Silicon Valley guy move. I mean, I it's a little it, bullish. It could, dude. These it could be these Saudi guys. You know, these I know people. Who you know would, what? We're I know gonna people who would like who wouldn't even consider that that is a significant amount of money. And they, they had no, they had London on the phone. They had people in the room. It was great. It, the whole thing was exciting. The real question is. Is, what, is the rising our, tide lift Where's all the vintage Rolex market well, going? You know what, where's you know it? Uh, we we're all old guys who like watches. But I, you know <laughs> Will, what I Will you. do you wear a watch in there? The young kid looking at him shaking, eating his uh, avocado toast. Nope, I've got Pulls my phone with the phone. thing. Right, that's. And I said, does Will know who Paul Newman is? In twenty five years, you know who Paul years, Newman is. Yeah, he's an actor. In, in twenty five years, no, they, he makes salad dressing. That's what that guy knows out there, <laughs> and that's the problem. He also made years, some pet treats. Yeah, twenty five years, everyone says Paul Newman. Like like if I said Lionel Barrymore, yeah. like who who gives a shit about Lionel well, Barrymore? You can say that about Cars too, but I I don't know. I, I, I get don't know. The... I think I think we're beyond uh, peak McQueen, and uh, McQueen. I don't seems know to about be... that either. I, well, I we disagree. certainly will be in twenty years. Yeah, people my age, and I'm a little younger. I'm 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 a half a generation below you guys. People my age do not give a flying fuck about Steve McQueen. I assure you. Paul, um, Paul Walker is our Steve McQueen. Right. All right. You let's go to I mean? some more questions. Paul Walker's here. skyline in fifty years may carry more value than maybe not a McQueen XKSS, but one of McQueen's like regular cars. That is my I, dream uh, car. Joel that McHale is my icon. Paul, Paul about... Walker skylines yep. your dream car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See. Number four. Yeah. Can we yeah. get one? Can we get one? Yes. We can get skylines. I, strong, I got the hookup on Skylines. We I strongly skylines disagree with that. All right, let's get in some more questions here. <laughs> you uh, have driven one. They're awesome. This guy doesn't want you to destroy the 87, Matt. But, okay, uh, yeah. buy it for $60,000. <laughs> so here's my, my other idea. All these poor people were such whiny little... Everybody wants to know about this so Paul Newman was, Daytona, this Paul Newman Daytona. All right, let's I had get, an idea, Zuckerman. I thought maybe I would hold Cassis Red for ransom. I would do a Kickstarter... Yes. And if I got like twenty grand on the Kickstarter, I'd keep Cassis Red. Otherwise, I would do a live stream sandbox. I think you should. I think you should get the money <laughs> and get the car. All right, here's the Amal Nitrate. Here. Matt, right this is a question for you. Focus, gentlemen. Drive a sorted five-speed nine twenty-eight. This is Wisco Whips and Watches. I do. I think your opinion would change. Uh, drove one for one, taken was pleasantly surprised. Means that guy has one. Oh, he's what? talking to us. He's oh. yeah. He's saying. Oh, do you it, guys my not opi- like He's saying our opinion would change, uh, Zuckerman. Oh, no, I like nine twenty eight. What do you nice. like about them? T- change my opinion in a minute. Go ahead, talk. Tell First me. First of all, I do not believe a nine twenty eight is a replacement for a nine eleven. If that's where you guys are, if that's your argument against, I just I drove one that was a it was like an eighty seven S four with like a nice exhaust on it. Well, clean car, right? Mm-hmm. Low mileage. I just thought it was a nice, cool tourer. It made a nice sound. It was smooth. It felt solid. It was comfortable. I mean. Is it a sixty-five or seventy thousand dollars driving experience? No, but it's, it's probably. Is like it a, a viable collector car? Could be the the good ones. I think yeah. And yeah. for that segment, for people who have twenty-five grand, maybe. Yeah. No, I think I think you probably get a lot more nine twenty-eight for twenty-five grand than you get for you get nine eleven for twenty-five oh, grand. Yeah. I right. always like the back end of that car. They're, I like the later ones. I, I, a lot of people like the early ones without the side mm-hmm. skirts and the stuff. I prefer the later ones, but I think the 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 GTS, the nine twenty eight GTS, what a car, ass, huh? that it's a ass, little, yeah. yeah, it's just a little un- underwhelming if you've driven a nine eleven. I think that's the only issue yeah. I have. Yeah, I mean, no. if you were starting there and before you had a nine eleven, then I have no no issues. They're not with that. particularly exciting, but they are lovely, like touring road trip kind right, of cars. Right. You know, they they're cool, and it has the word Porsche on it. And we like that. All right, uh, Estevez Breton, uh, tell us about the T's. Oh, yeah, you know, Jerry and I had a double breakdown this past week in cars. We broke down. Has this ever happened to you? We're in, I'm in the 70 911T on the PCH. He's in his 1975 914. Oh, is that that yellow one I the saw? The yellow one with 3,000 right? original miles. We both broke down in the same spot <laughs> while we were driving. I turn around. He's not there. I go to turn around. I go, what happened? He goes, car's dead. I pull my car up next to his. My car went dead. Ah! As if there were some sort of alien <laughs> magnetic field like that shut us down. old people dying <laughs> right. within a day of each it other. Was, Misery we, loves company. It was <laughs> right in front of a sober recovery house. So we had to push the cars into the spots. And then the guys this. came out and said, you can't be here. And we got, we we really have no choice. Yeah, we'll we'll start shooting heroin to come who in. Who tells we, we've got Jerry move, but, Seinfeld, you can't be here? Re- 
tell me that story. <laughs> tell that that was a great story. What's that about the VIP parking? Yes, yes, and and the, you told me that Jerry went to park in the VIP parking, and the lady said, "This is for VIP." And he goes, "Yes, I'm Jerry Seinfeld." She said, "This is for VIP." That's hysterical. <laughs> she didn't recognize him. It's very funny. But what I mean, it was so crazy. I've so they're asking what amazing. went wrong. You know, this is why I drive a new car for a week is to find the things that are going wrong. With the 911T, it was batteries and starter. Okay. So the batteries were dying, and the starter but was once going. Once it was already running. You know what? You, when did the, it die, or when, did you shut it off and it wouldn't? Start no, no, again? it would not start again. Oh, okay. Yeah, I turned it off. I went to start it. The engine was hot. The starter was hot, and that was it stopped it from working. Right. And the batteries are low. So if that it had sat for another hour. Did it start again later? It did not. Uh, no, we were able to after an hour. After an hour, we were able to push start it. Okay. And we drove. I drove it to Bill's, and then it died there too. Uh, so, no. but I would rather wait for the truck at, at Bill's. Bill's. Yeah. And Bill, by the way, Bill is the proprietor of the uh, Malibu kitchen saw it on the instagram feed you can see all this stuff on my instagram like page promotion he's gonna have to change the name of that place to bills we just keep calling it bills i feel like we're doing it in an injustice a minute a minute after i post he he shows up in his range rover with bagels and coffee God and cream damn. he delivers it right to he's us he's a saint he is an they all-star call him the sandwich nazi but in fact he's more like a, the sandwich and saint. he brought and he brought fruit and it, i was flagging at that point i hadn't eaten breakfast and i had been standing <laughs> in the sun that was that 106 degree day oh. and it really saved my life bill we and love bill. you so and, and Jerry's car, rescue. Jerry's car, uh, we think it's the fuel pump, but his just yes, he stopped at the red light and it just never it miles. never went. It's amazing he doesn't it doesn't piss fluid every time you turn the key. He'll well, be, that's, he'll be in over a hundred grand before you. Yeah. Know. <laughs> that's what happens with these cars, car. these cars that sit, these cars that aren't driven, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, my car is um, getting better and better the more I'm driving it. I just did brought my Mustang to Las Vegas for a YouTuber project car challenge at the mm-hmm. racetrack. And there were five cars in the challenge, and my Mustang was the only car that didn't have his hood up throughout I, the day. Yeah, yeah. I thought I saw it go up you with s- its hood up. No, no. That, the car, the smoke. Yeah. That was Rob Ferretti's Corvette, which oh, caught okay. fire. That's my hilarious. Mustang was it caught fire. A, it caught fire. Real fire. Real burned f- to a crisp. No, no, not no. burned to the ground, but a hundred percent flames, engine fire. All right. Yeah. M <laughs> M Fingleton seven seventeen wants an update on the Zuckerman Speedster. Now Zuckerman was in an accident in his fifty eight Speedster. Hit a uh, van you full have of cause ca- to sue. He hit a Man. van full of cats. A van full <laughs> with, off. with hit two hippies. I yeah. swear to God, a stone, a stone, a very nice stoned hippie guy with bleary red eyes and a Star Trek T shirt and two large hippie women in peasant skirts. No. And I asked them, "How are you?" And they said, "We're fine, but the cats are upset." <laughs> and, and I, what? What? What are you saying to me? And yes, we have ten rescue cats in a van. And so I did get a check for my insurance company. The first check for the initial repairs, one hundred seven thousand dollars. <laughs> the t- the budget for this, right? Well, not the budget. The damage is one hundred seventy nine thousand, right? Probably by the time they so, do the supplements and finish. So where is is Will Hoyt working Will on it right is, now? No, it's glacial. It's, it's glacial. It's glacial. It's that means like, it's just gonna sitting be, in the lot. Two years to fix that. Two car. two angry years, and I just said, "Dude, I'm going to take some key man life insurance out on you, Will Hoyt, because this is this is taking a long. It's going to take a long yeah, ass yeah. time. That bastard, and I love him, but that bastard has three of my cars right now. <laughs> Unbelievable. The problem with owning a Porsche is that the people that can work on them well. Have a backlog like you wouldn't believe. My friends at BBI Autosport that they set up my Mustang. I mean, my Mustang is the worst car in this shop in a, in a dozen years. But they're going to be doing the uh, the engine work on my on my Porsche, which is basic stuff. But I have I have an appointment now for February. Worse than your HMO doctor. <laughs> yes. And w- you know what he said to me? Well, on another car we were doing, he says, I didn't know it would take this long. I said, You've been doing this for 50 years. When do you know how long it takes to do it? All right, here we go. Uh, I just caught drive and was blown away by the DC drive trains. What is the DC drive trains? That's in drive. DC- Loved that oh. Remac concept oh, was, one. Yeah, so there's an episode this on. This is from uh, Zoot. Salures. Thank you, wow. Zoot. Um, <laughs> the um, yeah. So the the it's spelled. Have you heard Rimac? But it's Rimac. actually pronounced Rimats. Rimats. Rim, okay. It's, a, it's a, a Croatian. It's an electric supercar, and they are doing some. You, it's the thing that Richard Hammond crashed. That is the, on the one Grand he crashed Tour. in. Yeah, we were actually supposed to. So do, there are a few of those. There were two. We were supposed to do a film with one. Right. Richard Hammond crashed it. Yep. So they. 
uh, had to go to Croatia and do like a thing at the factory without actually driving it. Okay. Um, but they did drive it. No, they they ended up driving it later. But um, and what did you think of it? I didn't drive it. Oh, I didn't. can't tell you. I've never seen it in person. That was one of the segments that was I was not involved in. For my part in that show, I drove the NSX, the new NSX, and I loved it. Really? Loved yeah, I like that car too. It's a I great it. looking car. Dude, for the money, it's great. It is so fast, and this car has you know the problem with um, most mid engine cars. Whether you're talking about a Ferrari, a Lamborghini the Audi R8, uh, the McLarens, is when you really, really start to go really fast. Um, Undulating road and uneven tarmac, the front end can get a little pushy and floaty and unsure. And that's just sort of the way of the mid-engine car. What the NSX has with its electric motors, you know, it's mid-engine in the back. Uh. It has an electric motor at each front wheel. And each of those electric motors can do its own thing. So it... It has the it has the stickiest front end of any mid engine car I've ever driven at any price. And I I grant that I drove a nine eighteen for five minutes and I haven't pushed it to its limit, but for one hundred and ninety grand loaded, this car is a value for sure. It's it's extraordinarily fast and very very. Cool have you been in that new four GT? No. I have not. Do you have I've any? Do you have presen- any? I've been in the presence of one, and the the consensus I have driven, I have heard from people who've driven them, is that it, it seems like a great racetrack car, but a less than ideal road car. Whereas the old GT, the 0406 car, is a spectacular road car, and it le- and was not a very good race car. Mm. So, I think if you go into it with that mindset, then you will you. It was I, I was at the track when Chris Harris was reviewing it and while I was doing the NSX at the same time, and it was insanely fast. Chris Harris was like, I mean, he was seeing, I think he saw 170-something on the back straight of VIR, wow. which is really yeah, fast. Yeah, that is really fast. Because yeah. <laughs> we were getting up to 163. In and what, that, a Turbo S or something? Yeah, no, in a GT3 RS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is, this is That's extraordinary, nuts. The, yeah. the speed you can carry. All right, let's car. go deep in. Car. You know what I like about Matt Ferris? is he can answer all car questions, and he yeah. can talk about anything cars. Yeah, me mesmerized. So I'm going to – so CYKBC on Instagram. By the way, these are, questions are all coming in on Instagram. That's really the only thing I check and like to be a part of. So if you want to talk to me, talk to me there. Here's what his question is. Nerd session Nerd on session. wheel manufacturers mm. from Japan. Japan, USA, Germany, Italy, etc. All forged wheels are not created equal. Truth. Look at the detail work wheels put into their assembly. What does he mean by uh, that? And the there's de- no, the, there's no um, question here. I think Fuchs, BBS, Volk, Oz, HRE, Forge Line, etc. I don't think there's Where's a question, your question there. There's no question. I think he, but he w- wants us to discuss. I think he would like us to discuss different wheel manufacturers so with, when you <laughs> why i don't know here's the one thing with buying wheels is just don't go cheap you know don't buy that ebay crap don't buy the chinese stuff it, it, it can especially if you literally it's really good if you rule for the, life if by if the way the don't buy the car, chinese stuff well because you can get look hres and vbs's are really expensive and the wording of his question is weird but work is a is actually a wheel company right um the stuff from germany the tuve german tuv they have standards that are much stricter than ours. So if you find a TUV approved wheel, then it has passed fairly rigorous testing, which is required in Germany. As a matter of fact, I was just in Germany, and I rented a Audi S7 from a company called Sixt, uh, and Hannah curbed a wheel. <laughs> and because Ooh. I rented the Hannah's car, the girlfriend. my girlfriend, and and I th- I told her I was going to throw her under the bus for this because she curbed the wheel. So she's because, not listening because the wheel had to be repaired to tube standards. Yes, that little bit of curb rash cost me twelve hundred euros. T U V equals F U K. Yeah. So I so so are any of these wheels at ready rims for rent? Can you can, you, can we rent this? Shit? If you're doing your first track day, I recommend renting rims. For All right, Joshy Perot, and then we're gonna get out of here. He's got a question. Let's talk Fords. I'm a former five liter guy yeah. since nineteen. 19- 90, but now an air-cooled guy and never going back. The Fox bodies seem to be creeping up a few years, but now seem flat. Do you see them ever increasing in the market, and how do you feel your modified notchback stacks up to a stock 911-32 Ooh, of the same vintage? Interesting question. When and is the below show that, going Tiffany up? Stone, three thumbs up. When is the show going up, airing? Which show? 
The one we're recording now. Uh, this will go up next week, okay. a couple days. Oh, well, just because I want to We're recording answer... on a Friday. It'll be up this mm-hmm. Wednesday. Okay, I just want to – because to answer the gentleman's question, I have to give away something that is coming out okay. on Monday. So no problem. So there we go. So Fox Bodies, you know, they were worth dirt, and now they're worth slightly more than mm-hmm. dirt. Mm-hmm. Dirt plus. There was a lot of them, you know, and if you buy a good one, you can drive it a little bit and have fun, and your money is safe. But you're talking about – not a huge amount of money, you know. <laughs> right. I've had someone. I had someone come up to me yesterday and ask about two forty. So you know, I bought a stock two forty. It's my money. I was like, you, you bought it for seven grand. I mean, how low? <laughs> how low can it go? You right, know? right, right, right. You're within FDIC limits <laughs> yes. here, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I'm not trying to be, you know, condescending towards people who are buying cheaper cars, but I'm just saying that. If you wanted to invest eight thousand dollars in something, you could probably do better than buying a fox. Body. Yeah, Bitcoin might yeah. be. You remember, your speed. I, I got that fox body in the in the garage. I with do my remember 89. that. Yeah. Well, do, I, do you I still ha- do you still have that? No, I I had two. I purchased, or I should say, I traded and got two cars that had not been driven in twenty five years. One okay. was an eighty nine nine eleven. Okay, that took me. Almost a year to get it drivable again, the turbo. <laughs> but there was a 93 Fox Body <clears throat> Mustang Cobra. Oh, those are great. And those it, will be worth some money. And it the Cobras was, are good. And it was a 2,000-mile car. It was, And all we had to do was put in gas, yeah. oil, and a new battery. <laughs> and that sucker fired right up. Yeah, yeah. And it was... Totally fun, and I drew and I and I traded that yeah, to that Ray was J cool. as a as a part trade on a I on remember a, that, on that yeah. target, but it was I thought okay. it was cool. As a ninety three Cobra or a ninety three Cobra R, if it's nice, is an investment. The Cobra car. R, the is Cobra a R is really, very rare. Is a very rare car. The Cobra, I think the value I got for that car was somewhere in the thirties. That's yeah. A Cobra is yeah. worth real money, and a Cobra R is very. I think they made fifty Cobra Rs in ninety three, and it was fun. It sounded great. Yeah. It slid around every corner. <laughs> it had a it had a very comfortable Barca lounger seat. Yeah, it, it had everything you could want. <laughs> yeah, a Barca lounger I, I, seat. My Fox body makes me feel like I'm in high school, and I just took it to this track day and beat the shit of it all day. Justin Bell, my friend Justin Bell came Justin. out. He drove it. Mm-hmm. He loved it. Uh, so to answer the second half of his question, how would it compare to, I think he said, a Carrera of the same year? I Three, don't have two. that comparison. What I do have is same racetrack, same day, same driver, me. Porsche 911 991 GT3. <laughs> Steel brakes, P0 tires on the GT3. Yep. My, must, my Fox body in the GT3, I ran a 57-1 lap. In my car, I ran a 55-8. Come on. Just saying. Same Is that, driver, same how, you, how much you would you just, how much, You loaded the deck on that one. I did not. But I you're very not. familiar with your, obviously. I'm, it's my car. It's I'm your familiar right. with my yeah. car. And in the GT, and, and my still. best lap time occurred in my fourth session in my car. Wow. Whereas I only got one session in the GT3. So I'm not saying. But it still is look, a remarkable I'm not, figure. Remarkable, I'm not yeah. trying to say that my car is faster than a GT3 because I don't think it is. But what I am still, saying is. I know it's not. What I am saying is <laughs> it's in the same league performance. Yeah, which is impressive. It's not. Just gets Bell, back to the perfect show for you. Build it or buy yeah. it. Justin Bell was uh, – I was a little faster in my own car than right. Justin was in my car. Justin was a little faster in the GT3 than I was in the GT3. Okay, okay. That gives you some pretty good data points. Yeah. So, I mean, I, not, I don't know if there's a bigger story there, but my Mustang there is, is fast. There is, but we're going to have well. to save it for another episode of Spikes Car Radio. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Matt Farah. His uh, show is Drive. you got to check it out on NBC Sports and, and find him on YouTube. on YouTube. And the Smoking Tire. He's great. You're going to love him. And, of course, Zuckerman, if you've been injured in a uh, in an accident, or if you've fell fallen on a banana up, peel. fell on a banana peel or hurt on a bike, you call Paul Zuckerman. He'll get you Domani. See you next week on Spikes Car Radio. Thanks for listening to Spikes Car Radio. Download new episodes every Wednesday on the Podcast One app or subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com.